Hi guys, welcome back. We're going to continue with Aunt Flossie's hats and crab cakes later. We're going to continue working on visualizing. Our vocabulary, you probably already know it by now, so we're just going to do it really quick. Crab cakes are small rounds of crab meat. Wooly is like a sheep's curly hair. Hooves are hard coverings on horses' feet. Terrapins are turtles. Buglers are people who play a musical instrument called a bugle. Remember, it's like a trumpet. And rippled means moved in very small ways. Listen as I read. One Sunday afternoon, Sarah and I go to see great Aunt Flossie. Sarah and I love Aunt Flossie's house. It is crowded full of stuff and things. Books and pictures and lamps and pillows. Plates and trays and old-fashioned dried flowers. And boxes and boxes and boxes of hats. On Sunday afternoons, when Sarah and I go to see Aunt Flossie, she says, Come in, Susan. Come in, Sarah. Have some tea. Have some cookies. Later, we can get some crab cakes. We sip on our tea and eat our cookies. And then Aunt Flossie lets us look in her hat boxes. We pick out hats and try them on. Aunt Flossie says they are her memories, and each hat has its own story. Hats, 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 hats. A stiff black one with bright red ribbons, a soft brown one with silver buttons, then floppy hats that hide our eyes, green or blue or pink or purple. Some have fur and some have feathers. Look, this hat is just one, has just one smooth, soft rose, but there's... Here's one with a trillion flowers. Aunt Flossie has so many hats. On Sunday afternoon, I pick out a woolly winter hat, sort of green, maybe. Aunt Flossie thought a minute. Aunt Flossie always thinks a minute before she starts a hat story. Then she sniffed the woolly hat. Just a little smoky smell now, she said. Sarah and I sniffed the hat too. Smoky smell, Aunt Flossie? The big fire, Aunt Flossie said. The big fire in Baltimore. Everything smelled of smoke for miles around, for days and days. Big fire. Didn't come near our house on Center Street, but we could hear fire engines racing down St. Paul. Horses' hooves clattering, bells, whistles. Your great-grandma and I couldn't sleep. We grabbed our coats and hats and ran outside. Worried about Uncle Jimmy's grocery store. Worried about the terrapins and crabs. Big fire in Baltimore. Aunt Flossie closed her eyes. I think she was seeing long ago. I wondered about crab cakes. Did they have crab cakes back then? Then Sarah sniffed Aunt Flossie's hat. No more smoky smell, she said. But I thought I could smell some just a little. Then Sarah tried a different hat dark blue with a red feather. This one, Aunt Flossie, this one. Aunt Flossie closed her eyes and thought a minute. Oh my, yes, my, 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 what an exciting day. We waited, Sarah and I. What happened, Aunt Flossie, I asked. Big parade in Baltimore. Oh, parade, Sarah said. We love parades. I made that hat, Aunt Flossie said, to wear to watch that big parade. Buglers bugling, drummers drumming, flags flying everywhere. The boys, soldiers you know, back from France, marching up Charles Street. Proud, everyone cheering, everyone shouting. The Great War was over, the Great War was over. Let's have a parade, I said. Sarah put on a dark blue hat. I found a red one with a furry pom-pom. And we marched around Aunt Flossie's hat. March with us, Aunt Flossie, I cried. But she was closing her eyes. She was singing long ago. Maybe she's dreaming about crab cakes, Sarah said. Then we looked in the very special box. Look, Aunt Flossie. Here's your special hat. It was a big straw hat that had green. Bleh. It was the big straw hat with pink and yellow flowers and green velvet ribbon. Aunt Flossie's favorite best Sunday hat. It's our favorite story because we are in the story, and we can help Aunt Flossie tell it. Aunt Flossie smiled. One Sunday afternoon, she said, we're going out for crab cakes. Sarah and Susan and Mommy and Daddy, I said, and Aunt Flossie, said Sarah. 
Aunt Flossie nodded. We were walking by the water, and the wind came. Let me tell it, I said. The wind came and blew away your favorite best Sunday hat. It landed in the water. It was funny, said Sarah. I didn't think so, said Aunt Flossie. And Daddy tried to reach it, I said. But he slid down in the mud. Daddy looked really surprised, and everybody laughed. He couldn't rescue my favorite, favorite best Sunday hat, said Aunt Flossie. And Mommy got a stick and leaned far out. She almost fell in, but she couldn't reach it either. The water rippled, and your favorite best Sunday hat just floated away like a boat. Now comes the best part. I'll tell it, said Sarah. A big brown dog came. It was walking with a boy. May we help you, the boy asked. My dog Gretchen can get it. The boy threw a small, small stone. It landed in Aunt Flossie's hat. Fetch, Gretchen, fetch. Fetch, Gretchen, fetch. Gretchen jumped into the water, and she swam. She swam, and she got it. Gretchen got Aunt Flossie's hat. Hooray for Gretchen, we all jumped it up and down. Hooray for Aunt Flossie's hat. It was very wet, said Aunt Flossie, but it dried just fine, almost like new. My favorite, favorite, best Sunday hat. I like that story, I said. So do I, said Sierra. And I like what happened next. We went to get crab cakes. Crab cakes, said Aunt Flossie. What a wonderful idea. Sarah Susan, telephone your parents. We'll go get some crab cakes right now. I think Sarah and I will always agree about one thing. Nothing in the whole wide world tastes as good as crab cakes. But crab cakes taste better after one of Aunt Flossie's hat stories. So the first time I asked you guys to draw what you thought or find a picture of what you thought Aunt Flossie's favorite hat would look like. This is the picture I chose, and it looks nothing like Aunt Flossie's favorite hat with the um, straw hat with the flowers on it. But that's okay. That's just what I thought, maybe. Now, I asked you guys this, too. What was your favorite hat story? Well, see, the girls, Sarah and Susan, are holding Aunt Flossie's favorite hat. But... I picked, of course, the story with the dog because, you know, I love my animals. But you could pick a different story. Maybe you like the one about the parade. Maybe you like the one about the fire. It's totally up to you which one was your favorite story. Yesterday, I asked you guys to draw a picture of what you thought at Flossie's hat what the parade looked like. Well, the picture in the book didn't actually show Aunt Flossie with her hat. It showed the big parade. And we were up to, um, left up to guess maybe what Aunt Flossie's favorite hat might look like. So that's part of the visualization, guys. You get to think and see what you think her, fat, your hat, her hat looked like. But here's the big parade, and look, there are hats everywhere. Maybe the one down in the corner, maybe that's Aunt Flossie's hat. We don't know. The story did not tell us. Since we're working on visualizing, I'm still not allowed to show you pictures. Your task or job for today is to draw what you think the dog looked like that retrieved Aunt Flossie's hat from the water. This is all the story told you. Now comes the best part, and I'll tell it, said Sarah. A big brown dog came. And that's all the story tells us. So now you get to decide what kind of big brown dog you want to be in the story. And I will show you guys a picture of the dog tomorrow. Thank you guys for coming today. Come back tomorrow and we'll learn more about Aunt Flossie and her hats.